My name is Chris DeBikus, lead service technician here at Hydolf North America, and today I'm going to be showing you how to access your electronics panel on your HiVap industrial unit. Right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the rotation lock knob. Uh, so make sure that you get the, the lock knob in the lock position, so you want that orange arrow pointing in the 12 o'clock position. Uh, next you're going to grab yourself a T15 Torx drive, and you'll notice uh, right about in the 1 o'clock position there's a little grub screw that's there. Just take your T15, unscrew that little grub screw, and then uh, you don't have to pull it all the way out, you don't have to unscrew it all the way, and then your lock knob should pop right off. Once you have your lock knob removed, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is remove the front panels of the unit. So there are three panels, there's one up on the top here, then you have your control panel, and then you have this panel here. Uh, so on the top, to remove the first panel, you have two screws. They are a T10 Torx drive. So all we're gonna do is remove the two top screws. So once you have the screws removed, uh, this panel right here, you could just pop it right off. There are two pins on the bottom that kind of snap into place. So you just kind of have to push a little bit, pull it out. And then on the back side here, uh, this is your emergency stop. If you have an older design like this, uh, you will have this e-stop design. So you could just basically kind of turn, pull this out, and put the panel off to the side. Once you have your top panel removed, the next step is going to be removing the uh, control panel. Uh, the way I go about this, there's three screws that hold this panel into place. There's two on the top, there's one on the bottom here. Uh, it's a grounding screw, um, and that is indicated by a little grounding sticker. So that would be the first screw we're gonna remove. Just so then you have support from these two screws on the top. Now one thing you're going to want to have uh, with you when you do remove this panel is possibly a stool or something to help support this panel once you remove it uh, because it will be wired to some electronics on the panel and we don't want to damage any of the connections or any of the wires that are on this panel here. So you could just lay it down like that. Once you have your control panel removed, next we will remove the bottom blanking panel. Now on the older units, uh, you will have just a panel. And on the newer units, uh, you will have a power filter on the back of this panel. Now sometimes this panel may just fall off, other times you may have to press down and then pull it off. At this point right now, we have our electronics panel exposed, uh, but we are going to be removing the rest of the side panel here to make access to the electrical components a lot easier. Okay, so after you have your front panels removed, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is remove everything on the side of the unit. So your glassware, um, your, your glassware cabinet, uh, your panels that are on the side, your uh, receiving cassettes, um, and then once you have all that removed, the first thing we're going to do is take off the mantle. So with that, there are five screws that hold the mantle in place. There's three on the top and two on the bottom, uh, and they are T25. Uh, so with that being said, we'll start removing the mantle. Okay, so once the screws are removed, we'll basically lift up on the mantle slide right off. Okay, so once you have your mantle removed, uh, you want to take, you want to grab a T10 drive, and there are going to be six screws here that we have to remove. Okay, and to finally remove this panel, you're going to want to grab a T10 Torx drive, and on the top here we have three final screws to remove. Now when you're removing the final screw on the top here, just kind of keep your hand up and keep it pressed. This bottom panel is caught on a lip there, so that will support for a little bit. Uh, but you don't want to just let this fall to the ground. So once you have all the screws removed, you can remove that panel and then your electronics panel is exposed. Okay. So once you have that panel removed, 
Uh, you'll start seeing your electronics panel here. You'll notice that uh, you have some electronics components that are tucked behind uh, the motor right here. This is the lift motor. Um, so in order to access that panel back there, there is a little retaining screw that's on the bottom here. You could use a T25 Torx drive. Unscrew that. Uh, also in the process, you can remove this cable right here. This is the power cable for the heating coils. That'll make uh, sliding this board out a little bit easier. Also, keep in mind, you will have uh, some wires that are, are zip tied down. Um, and as you pull the board out, you wanna keep in mind that these wires might be tight. So the best thing to do is get a pair of side cutters and just snip the zip strips out of the way. You can slide the panel out. And now we have access to replace any of the components that we need to. Okay, we have our power board here. We have our contactor for the heating elements. This is a power supply for the uh, control panel. This is our microcontroller right here, which sends out all the individual signals to the sensors. Uh, this is our motor PCB. So that sends all the signals to the motor drivers. Uh, we have power supplies. We have a 24 volt and a 48 volt. Both are in charge of running the motors. And we have a small fuse panel down here. Okay, so once you have your component replaced on the electronics panel, the next thing we're gonna do is close everything back up. The final thing we're gonna do to button everything up is slide your panel back into place. Make sure that your retainer hole is lining up. If you need to pry the, uh, the guide bar up, go right ahead. You may want to use a smaller driver in order to align that hole to get your screw started. All right, so that screw's in place. We'll plug our heating coils back in. Now, when we go to install the panel, we want to make sure that our cables are kind of tucked away. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to be a little loose, but uh, try to get them in as flat as possible so we're not going to pinch any of the wires and expose any of the electrical wires. Okay, so we grab our panel. Uh, now there's a cutout on the panel that goes over your manifolds here, so we're going to want to get that in place first. And then we can get the bottom caught on this lip right here, make sure that your, make sure the holes are aligned with the shipping bar holes. And we're going to get our three screws on top caught first. And then that way we shouldn't have to worry about this panel falling off. And it will make reassembling everything else much easier. Then we are going to reinstall the six screws we took out. Again, those are the T10 drives. As long as you get one started, the rest should kind of fall in place, but it will be a little tricky to realign the holes. So once we have our panel in place, next we want to attach our mantle. Now there is a little bit of a lip on the mantle. In order to get this into place, you want it to get underneath that panel. So that lip is going to go under this panel. You slide it in, and then you can align the holes uh, to screw everything back into place. So with that, we grab our T25. And when you first put the screws in, I wouldn't tighten them down all the way because you may have to wiggle this mantle around a little bit in order to get some of the other screws started. So once we get everything caught, then we'll go back and tighten everything down accordingly. Okay, so once we have that final screw in, we'll go ahead and start tightening the rest of them down. Now that we have our mantle in place, the next thing we're going to do is reinstall the front panels. Okay, to begin in reinstalling the front panels, we want to start with our bottom piece first. You'll notice on the back side there are two tabs. These tabs 
kind of slide in behind these two little tabs that are sticking out on the actual unit. So in order to get those on, we'll start low. Play with it a little bit, there we go. And once those are caught, we wanna make sure that the wires are out of the way from the control panel here. Next, we'll get our control panel back in place. And usually with this one here, I'll start with these two screws up on top. Make sure again, the wires are in place, you're not pinching anything. Okay, and as you're putting in these top screws, again with these, you don't necessarily have to tighten these down all the way because we are gonna be reattaching that screw on the bottom and that's gonna pull that panel back up into place. So let's just uh, leave those loose for now. Okay, and then the final panel is going to be that top piece. Remember to reinstall your emergency stop. That just snap, that just clicks into place. Line your pins up here with these two holes. Of course, the, the post from the locking mechanism. Give them a little punch. Attach the two screws at the top. And then lastly, we'll be installing the locking knob. Now this is a pretty simple process to reinstall this. Just make sure that that arrow's in the 12 o'clock position and then that grub screw should line up nicely. And we'll just screw that down into place. And you're good to go. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Again, my name is Chris DeBikus, lead service technician with Hydolf North America. And if you have any further questions, you can reach me at the contact information below.